Today we're going to cover how to safely remove and install an EEPROM. Make sure you save set points on any hardware you're changing an EEPROM in. Find out how by visiting our YouTube channel. After saving set points, let's dive into the panel you're changing the EEPROM on. It's worth noting that you must ensure the software version for all panels is the same so they can communicate. Taking a look inside the panel itself, the left hand side door will contain your display and documentation while the right hand side contains all panel hardware. The first step to any safe hardware change is to disconnect power from the panel itself. In this case, we're using the circuit breakers built into the panel to ensure that all power to the board we're making changes to is off. Be sure to ground yourself of any static electricity before touching the board. Once we're sure all power has been disconnected from the board, we can take a look at the PROM section we're working in today. There are three sockets here, MEM0, 1, and 3, respectively. For more complicated panels, there may be two PROMs in MEM0 and MEM1. More on that later. MEM3 is actually an expansion slot for more board memory. Now, using a safe pry tool, let's remove the chip by starting with the right end. As you insert the tool, be sure not to pry outward too quickly, as the legs on chips can be bent out of place pretty easily. Also, avoid prying underneath the chip socket between the board. Once the first side is loose, you can apply the same pressure to the opposite side. The chip should slide directly up and out of the socket. The same technique in reverse helps us seat the new EEPROM. Starting at the right side and lining up the legs with the end of the socket, always apply light and even pressure across the top surface of the chip. Always, always ensure that the semicircular chip guide is facing the symbol printed onto the board. If your chip is installed upside down, it will cause electrical damage to components as soon as the power is restored. Speaking of which, now that your EEPROM has been changed, you can flip the breaker and allow your panel to initialize and power back on. This is the point at which you would restore panel set points. Check that the WD or watchdog light is flashing on your board. When communications are resumed, the COM0 light will also be lit. Since this panel is not connected to a facility, ours is off. Lastly, let's revisit panels with two EEPROMs. Chip 1 of 2 is always in MEM0. Chip 2 of 2 is always in MEM1. Getting the chip location incorrect can cause damage or miscommunication between panels. Begin any two prom swap by following the removal method outlined at the beginning of this video. When installing, again, follow the socket from right to left and look out for that semicircular chip marker to be lined up on the chip and board. When you've replaced the EEPROMs in the right sockets, you can power on just like any other single chip swap. That's it. You're now ready to replace EEPROMs on any panels in the field, safely and professionally.